All right, so let's let's keep this going on. Like you, your friend who said that a lot of people have been um, uh, a lot of people have been talking about how can they worship behind a screen? Yeah. How can they engage? You know, now that they're separated from everybody, right? What's this like? So pick that up yeah. right there. Yeah. Well, like we as as church leaders, as pastors, as shepherds, like we do a lot of um, a lot of praying and a lot of work for. Um, those moments when we're together corporately for those to be significant and meaningful and to give God the most amount of space and room and opportunity to work and to speak and to change lives. Um, and so when all of that stuff is, is kind of stripped away and we can't get together, it's, it is more, it's, it's difficult. Like it's difficult for me. It's like, that doesn't make anybody a bad person or, or wrong or any of that kind of stuff, but um, it is very easy. And I mean, not like this, this can happen in corporate worship when we're together too, where you can just kind of watch, like just kind of observe what's going on, but you're not actively participating, but especially when there's a screen in the way and like, you know, nobody can see you. Like you're not, there's just a different thing. Like you're just thinking about it in a different way. And so we have to be more intentional about like, I am, I am privileged. I am responsible. Like I'm called. I am, I'm desperately needing to worship my heavenly father. Yeah. And that's not something you can do passively. Like worship doesn't just happen because you're, you're watching a video or you're sitting in a room. Like right. worship is, we are choosing to trust God right. no matter what's going on in the middle of whatever circumstance we are choosing to trust and we're going to respond obediently to, to his word, to his calling in our life, to his go love one another as I have loved you. We're going to do that as an act of love and service to Jesus. And right. that doesn't change. You know, like if we're behind a screen or if we're in a room with everybody, like we actively have to be choosing that and engaging in that. Yeah, it, it is very much a mindset, right? Like, like the, the reality is you have to, re, you have to realize, um, and I think there's, there's a possibility here that you're not the only one who is watching. Right. I think sometimes we think that we're the only ones watching that screen. It's really easy to do because we're used to thinking that it's just us in the screen. But the reality, there are hundreds of people that are watching. And, and even if you watch it at a different time than that time, there have been hundreds of people watching. Right. Or, or however many, it doesn't matter how many I'm just, but the idea is that you aren't alone in watching this. Absolutely. So, so you have to get it in your mind that, that even though you're experiencing this and, 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 and the truth is, there is nothing, there is nothing that will ever take the place of being able to do it in person. That, that is where there is incredible, um, there's just something unique and especially in, in, for, in the spiritual sense in the church, when, when people gather together who have one mind and one heart and, and our focus is on the presence of God and, and the love of God, even, um, you know, I was thinking about this even, and we've talked about this too, like when there's even natural disasters, right? There's been times where I've said, uh, and I, when, when I've led worship at times, I've been like, sing for people who cannot sing today, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, so there, there, is this, there is something that's very powerful about being together, but that doesn't have to change just because we're behind the screens, yeah. right? Absolutely. And it's kind of a gut check to a degree. Like, you are doing this, and you are participating, and you are worshiping, and you are singing out even if you can't sing and you're participating um, for an audience of one, like right. nobody can see you. Nobody knows you're, how you're participating or not. Like it, it is kind of a gut check of God. Is this something that's important to me or not? Like spending time with you in this way, does this matter or not? And, and my answer is yes, it matters. Desperately. It matters. And I love, I'd never used that language until I heard you say that of sing for people who can't sing right now. Right. Um, right. There's such a beautiful, like when we bring part of what worship is, is bringing to God um, our praise, but it's and our adoration, but it's also bringing to God our circumstances. It's bringing to God what he's it's connecting with his heart. And so, of course, his heart is is grieving for all of these things yeah. that are happening right now. Not yeah. not that he's some absent observer that's not actively engaged in the world by any means, but it's just like part of what we get to bring to God in worship is the reality of this is really hard right now. Right. And so that's a great segue to like, one of the things I've been thinking about is the fact that um, as this crisis continues to unfold, like, you know, we're just kind of at, we're, we're really at the early stages. We're for, for, for our nation and, and in particular our community here in the Charlotte area, no. um, the chances of, of people of all of us knowing somebody who gets sick from it, the reality that 
um, some of us might experience death and mm-hmm. suffering. Um, so I, I'll be honest with you, that's going to be one of the hardest things for me to wrestle with as a pastor of not being able to be with my people yeah. in, their, in, in, in some of their hardest times of suffering. Mm-hmm. And, and when I think about that and I think about how we gather at, the, at, at, our, at our church for worship and how we're not going to be able to gather in person. So how do we worship how do you know? Because the Psalms and uh, there's so many words of lament, of sadness, of sorrow. How do how does that fit into in our worship? You think? Yeah. Um, well, specifically, like being able to to find um, like to read through the Psalms right now. I think is a really like if you're looking for a reading plan or a prayer plan for right now, like reading through the Psalms is a great place to start because there are so many Psalms of of lament of uh, of sorrow. There's Psalms that, um, where like, especially the Psalms of David, where he's, he's running for his life. He doesn't know how things are going to go, um, in the next 20 minutes, you know? So he's, he's praying this, writing this prayer. That's, that's very urgent. Um, it's a great place to start. Yeah. And it's, um, I was thinking, I was looking at, uh, Exodus 15, um, is, is right after the Israelites, are like they're leaving Egypt and the, the Red Sea parts and they cross over the Red Sea. Um, and immediately Moses leads the people in a, in a song. Um, and so he's like, I will sing to the Lord for he triumphs gloriously and like goes through and just kind of says all the things that God did. And then immediately after that, um, the, the horses and the chariots get swallowed up that are chasing them. And then Miriam leads, which I think is cool that, um, that it, like a man and a woman both led this hymn of worship to God as these people are just beginning to learn who God is again. And, um, and she says a similar thing, sing the Lord for his triumph gloriously. And then two verses later, two verses, they see this, the Red Sea part and then splash back in two verses later. Then uh, the people were um, complaining and turned against Moses. What are we going to drink? They demanded like, they like they lasted two verses of seeing the water part, you know. Right. right. And I feel like in in this situation that's so applicable because we are so like because like the reality is we are on the front end of this, and yeah. most of us are gonna know somebody that that contracts COVID nineteen, and most of us are probably gonna know somebody by the time this is all said and done sure. that has passed away from this. Like that that's reality, and it's right. not trying to be fearful. It's just it's just the truth. Yeah. And like, we cannot allow ourselves to be the two verses later people. Like yeah. we've got to safeguard our own hearts right now. Like God, we are trusting you. We are yeah. serving you. We are worshiping yeah. you. My life is yours. Do with it whatever you want. Yeah. Um, I will praise the Lord no matter what. And this yeah. is, again, like we said earlier, it's kind of a gut check time. Of, yeah. of, I'm going to choose to praise even in the midst of the crazy. Right. You know, I, I, um, I was also thinking about like, even as we are getting, you know, we're a couple of weeks out from Easter uh, we've been in this Lenten season where it's a season of reflection and, mm-hmm. and um, it's a funny thing. I saw a funny meme the other day. It's like, uh, so I was trying to figure out what I was going to give up for Lent. <laughs> it's like, I'm at home. I'm giving up everything. Anyway. Um, I hadn't planned on giving up this much for Lent. <laughs> right. There you go. I think that's it. But I, I was thinking about how, like, even as we get close to the, where, where Jesus um, is arrested and is taken to the cross and he dies. And I think about like those early disciples, those early followers who in that moment are gripped by fear, mm-hmm. fear of the unknown, right? Yeah. Like talk about fear of the unknown. Their, their, their top leader, the guy who had been with them, the guy who they'd seen do so many miracles and all these different things is dead. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and I love those scriptures there um, where Jesus meets them in those, in those rooms where they've been locked down uh, now they're together, but they're isolated. Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, I was thinking about how, like, even in, in those moments, how Jesus shows up yep. and reminds them. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and I love the one where, where Jesus breathes the spirit upon them. Mm-hmm. Right. What a, what an amazing time. If, if we would, as a people, instead of embracing fear, embrace the spirit of God. Yeah. What kind of world we could, we could see change before our very eyes, you know, and, and, and even into the suffering, even into the, the anxiety and all the things that might be ahead of us, 
to be a people who are so filled with the love and the peace and the presence of a God who enters into our suffering with us, right? He doesn't cause the suffering, but he enters the suffering, yep. right? Mm-hmm. And um, so I think like even tomorrow morning, I'm excited about tomorrow morning's time of worship where we will gather together. I know we've kind of set it up as a little bit different. It's going to have a little bit different look. Uh, anything you want to talk about there at all before we kind of wrap things up here? Sure. Yeah. I, um, I get, we, so we gathered together um, earlier in, in the week and, and kind of set up a, a different way of, of just everybody knows that there's nobody in the room. <laughs> like, so instead of kind of pretending that everything is business as usual, it's, it's not like things are different. And so trying, we're like, we're really trying for tomorrow um, to help kind of everybody in their living room, wherever they are, wherever they're participating. And, and like, I don't even want to say like where, wherever you're watching from, like, yeah. I don't even want to use that language. I want to like wherever you're participating from yeah. is the yeah. language yeah. that I would want yeah. to use. Like that's good. Wherever you're participating from, like we're with you. We are like our spirits are joined together and unity in Christ is so, so important. Um, now, is so obvious that that is such an important thing. Yeah. Um, and, the, and the scripture tell us that the, like the world will know that Jesus is who he said he is by how we love each other and by how we, how the church sticks together. Yeah. Um, and so this is an opportunity for us to, to be able to do that. And so tomorrow as we're, as things um, just, they look and they feel a little bit different. Hopefully that helps kind of let the walls down a little bit and helps yeah. you participate and engage um, from wherever you are, you know, if live, your living room, your kitchen, on your yeah. phone, on a computer, um, wherever you might be participate with us tomorrow yeah i'm excited that tomorrow we're going to uh, be receiving the lord's supper together for the first yeah. time in yep. a couple of weeks we're, we're pretty used to receiving it every single week um because it it is such an incredible reminder but i think of all times we definitely need to be reminded mm-hmm. that the very real presence of jesus is with us yes absolutely right and yeah. so we're telling everybody any kind of juice whatever works <laughs> Yep. Any kind of bread, any kind of cracker that you can that you can grab a hold of and uh, and participate in that, and I'll lead you through that tomorrow morning um, at, toward the end of my uh, my message. But yep. I'm ex- I'm excited about a powerful worship gathering tomorrow, and I just want to encourage people to participate and be a part of it wherever they are, whenever they're able to watch it. Even participate, participate in their mind, participate in their hearts, and allow the Holy Spirit, allow this presence of God to minister to your heart and, and engage with him. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Absolutely. And Hey, like I, I would say, please, please sing. Like when we sing, sing out with us. And yeah. when Aaron's preaching, take notes. And say amen. We, when we pray, pray, Shout. Like, pray along. <laughs> Shout, that's right. Practice your amen. So I miss those amen. Like together, that's right. we're going to be that's shouting right. them out. So um, right. participate that way. Like it's just, it just makes all the difference in the world and reminding like what, what more do we need to be reminded of that right. the same power that raised Christ from the dead lives in you and is with you now, um, that Jesus did die an earthly death that Jesus did raise and conquer sin and death in the grave. Like we need There's to be hope. reminded of that. There There's is hope. hope. There is yeah. hope. There is hope. Yeah. yeah. Well, man, thanks for hanging out with me for a little bit here on this yeah. Saturday night. Absolutely. It was, it was almost live. Uh, yeah, I know. We'll put this video up, but uh, Dusty, tell your family hi for me. All right, you do the same. Yeah, and everybody out there, uh, we hope you get to see this video, and hope we'll see you in the morning, and you or you'll see us in the morning, hopefully. So, yep. Yep. Uh, nine, o'clock nine o'clock and eleven o'clock. There you go. All right, everybody. Pineville Church Facebook on um, Facebook Live as well. You can watch it, and we'll talk to you later. Thanks, Dusty. Thanks, Aaron. All right, bye, man. Bye.